Old Tom Gray here made me a remote grounding system for my welder. It allows me to get my grounding clamp a foot away from the gun or the stick. It allows me to ground very small parts in very tight places. And I made it out of a piece of super flexible stranded number six copper wire with a couple of ring terminals uh, crimped on it that I bought from McMaster, a couple scraps of copper, a couple of brass screws, and a $2 needle nose set of uh, imitation vice grips that I found at a garage sale. Uh, I've also seen these online on sale on Amazon for three bucks. So it's very simple, uh, but very handy. I've been wanting to do this one for a long time, so I'll show you how I did it. First, the basics of how this thing works. So let's say we have a piece of work that's either remote or it's mounted on something that's well insulated or it's powder coated, but I can't get I, or I don't want to get my big high dollar grounding clamp near it. I either can't get there or don't want to put it right next to the, to the gun. So I can remotely ground one end of this cable and then I can take my new grounding clamp and attach it to the work. Now this is just a cheap vice grip, cost me two bucks. So if I fry that thing, I really don't care. And I put a little copper hood on it. So the copper is under the jaw of the vice grip and it's clamped directly to the work. So I can conduct a lot of current. Number six wire is the same size ground circuit that I have in my shop. So this can handle all the ground of my welder. Same size conductor as the ground conductor on my welder. So this thing can handle all the amps I can throw at it. So the other advantage this has is this thumb screw is adjustable. So I can just simply loosen this up and reorient my cable, retighten my thumb screw, and then maneuver this thing around any way I want or any way I need to. Furthermore, this end is, is also adjustable. I just loosen up this screw and I can reorient the cable on this little bracket in case I need to get that into a tight spot. So this will help a lot with like welding inside cars, welding furniture when half of it's made out of wood, um, welding around anything that isn't conductive, or stuff where you just don't want to get your, your high dollar grounding clamp that close to the weld. Before getting going here, let's uh, mark out kind of our safe zones to attach our copper jaw to the main, the static handle of the cheapy little vice grip. So if I, it's hard to see, hard to photograph, but if you look at the way the toggle travels and the way the movable jaw travels, there's two zones, one here and one here, that if I articulate the thing through its entire range of travel, don't get touched. So we can use them to attach things. So one is roughly there, right behind the spring hook. And one is roughly here, right behind the movable jaw. This one's all uh, hobby store kind of stuff, so small tools. Um, little bitty parts. But let's get started. Um, I'm going to knock out this rivet that holds the lower jaw 
in my cheapy little uh, two dollar vice grip uh, just with the Dremel Okay, once you grind away a, a rivet, sometimes it's hard to see where it is. So I'm just going to put it on this little spacer from my press here and just whack the other end of it. And you can see the outline of it pop out of the grind. And then I'm just going to take a woodworking tool here and nail set and drive it out. Like so. And here is our fixed jaw, all stripped down. So now we're going to make the copper conductive piece out of this piece of inch by, I don't know, looks like about. 16 or 14 gauge copper bus bar to make small patterns like this like we need for our copper jaw uh, easiest way to do it or an easy way to do it is just take a piece of masking tape and this is just wide masking tape i bought it at a local big box store and tape it over the surfaces that you want to cover. In our case, it's from the pivot hole around this top hole. And then under the jaw, under the fixed jaw. So pair of scissors, stick it on there, okay, and I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut this away with a, with a knife and scissors um, to get it all prettied up the way I want it. There's my target area swaddled in masking tape and the hole marked for the pivot. Now I'm going to carefully peel this off here with the same tool I cut it with, which is my X-Acto knife, and stick it to my bus bar. Okay, there's the pattern. Uh, but before I stick it on here, I'm going to clean this before I start folding it. Just a piece of sanding sponge. Cut that with aircraft snips. And a Dremel. Okay, there it is with the tape peeled off. I just drilled a number eight clearance hole in here because the pin in the uh, vice grip is roughly number 10. Oh, sorry, number eight. 
So now let's do our first test fit. Here's number eight screw. Okay. I'm going to uh, scribe it and fold it. most critical fold is one that goes under the jaw. Obviously that's where the conduct the conduction takes place. So I'll just do that in my little hobby vice here. Test fit number two. There's our little copper jaw. Go to work forming it on that scribe line. I moved over to the big vise and wedged it in with a screwdriver so I could finish forming this rather small element here. So there it is in rough form. Now to keep it, to help keep the copper over the jaw. I'm going to put it in a little hobby vise here and just tweak it over that way a little bit like that. And that'll help force the steel jaw inside the copper once the screw is tightened up. So I'm going to I'm going to work this a little bit more with the hammer and then I'm going to clean up these edges and sand everything and round everything off and make it nice and smooth. There's our hood. Sand it down to like 60 grit just with the Dremel and all the edges are nice and smooth. And uh, now I'm going to drill the retention hole. I'm going to fit the hood, locate it with the pivot screw, like that, and then drill that way into the hood. Teensy weensy bit of anchor lube. And a number uh, 440 tap, just real easy. All right. <clears throat> so the point at the clamp end or at the hood end is compactness so nice and small the point at the grounding clamp end is ease of access so i want to make this not huge but big enough so we can clamp it around and easily maneuver it to whatever we're going to clamp it to us so i'm going to make it about three and a half four inches long bend up an ear and attach the cable to it. That'll give us plenty of room to get the ground clamp on it or arrange it however we want. So uh, let's go three and a half. 
just because And again, I'm going to clean it while it's still flat. And then cut something that looks halfway, halfway decent in here. I'm just going to bend an ear over, just eyeballing this. Try to get it a little straight. Reassembly. First, let's get the Work Pro put back together. Get the spring engaged on the spring hook. Get the toggle engaged under the toggle screw. Pivot the jaw down until the until the uh, pivot hole aligns. Install the hood, and I'm just using a button head cap screw uh, button heads and allen heads are all grade 8 so that's plenty good for a pin on something like this might wear out eventually but I doubt it that's it. and then I'm going to put on the cable washer. I'm using a brass thumb nut. You could use a wing nut too if you if you want to. But this is nice and convenient. And the work pro should work. Just like it always does. Yep. Okay. So there is our hooded grounding clamp. Now the now the other end, a uh, quarter inch brass screw. Cable, copper washer, and then install the retaining screw, which is just the number four little teeny weeny screw. Tighten it up with a little teeny weeny screwdriver. Okay, that'll keep everything in place. So let's say the mission for today is to weld these two little tiny pieces together. And I'm stuck using a powder coated clamp that won't conduct. So first of all, I can't clamp to, the, to this clamp because it won't conduct. The second thing is I don't want my high dollar grounding clamp right next to the gun like that. So let's take our new grounding system. I'm just going to clamp to the edge of the board. I'm a good 
9, 10 inches away from the work. I'm going to take the hooded end. I can loosen my thumb screw, reorient this any way I want, clamp it on, tighten down the thumb screw, and weld it together. Voila, and my grounding clamp stayed way out of the way. That's a success. So you might be asking, Tom, why all the copper? Why, why, me, why do this? Why not just like weld a stud onto this vice grip, hook up the cable and call it good? Well, if you've ever talked to an experienced welder or a welding instructor, the thing they're going to tell you is the number one culprit of crummy welds, besides crummy technique, is crummy grounds. Um, you got a bad ground, you're going to get a bad weld. And if you're in a tight spot or you're welding something that's really teeny weeny, you generally only get one shot at it. So you don't want to get in there, crawl inside something, or, or get your setup done on some one-off piece. Arc it, only to see your weld break because you didn't have a good ground. So this is all copper from this little hood on the vice grip all the way to the bracket for the welding the welder's grounding clamp. So copper, copper, copper. Good grounds, good conductors, good welds. Well, I'm going to leave this one here. Um, I'll be using this on projects in the future. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Finally just said I'll do just get around to do it. So I'm going to leave this one here. And it's on to the next project. I will see you there and then.